guns into the twisted metal machine. A man in a blackened American military uniform crawled from the wreckage and received two dozen rounds from the boy's weapons. The soldier's struggle ceased as soon as the first bullets raked across his back. Braver now, after the adrenaline rush of killing a man in front of the crowd of shouting civilians, the boys broke cover and moved closer to the wreckage. They reloaded their rifles and raised them to shoot at the burning bodies of the flight crew in the cockpit. But before they could open fire, three vehicles raced up from behind, pickup trucks full of armed Arabian foreigners, Al-Qaeda. The local kids wisely backed away from the aircraft, stood back with the civilians, and chanted a devotional to God as the masked men fanned out in the road around the wreckage. The broken corpses of two more soldiers fell clear from the rear of the Chinook and these were the first images of the scene caught by the three-man Al Jazeera camera crew that jumped from Truck 3. Just under a mile away, Gentry pulled off the road, turned into a dry stream bed, and forced the Land Rover as deep as possible into the tall brown river grasses. He climbed out of the truck and raced to the tailgate, swung a pack onto his back, and hefted a long camel-colored case by its carry handle. As he moved away from the vehicle, he noticed the drying blood all over his loose-fitting local clothing for the first time. The blood was not his own, but there was no mystery to the stain. He knew whose blood it was. Thirty seconds later, he crested the little ridge by the stream bed and crawled forward as quickly as possible while pushing his gear in front of him. When Gentry felt suitably invisible in the sand and reeds, he pulled a pair of binoculars from the pack and brought them to his eyes, centered on the plume of black smoke rising in the distance. His taut jaw muscles flexed. The Chinook had come to rest on a street in the town of al Baj, and already a mob had descended on the debris. Gentry's binoculars were not powerful enough to provide much detail, so he rolled onto his side and unsnapped the camel-colored case. Inside was a Barrett M107, a 50 caliber rifle that fired shells half the size of beer bottles and dispatched the heavy bullets with a muzzle velocity of nearly nine football fields a second. Gentry did not load the gun, only aimed the rifle at the crash site to use the powerful optics mounted to it. Through the 16 power glass, he could see the fire, the pickup trucks, the unarmed civilians, and the armed gunmen. Some were unmasked, local thugs. Others wore black masks or wrapped keffiyeh to cover their faces. This would be the Al-Qaeda contingent, the foreign fucks, here to kill Americans and collaborators and to take advantage of the instability in the region. A glint of metal rose into the air and swung down, a sword hacking at a figure on the ground. Even through the powerful sniper scope, Gentry could not tell if the prostrate man had been dead or alive when the blade slashed into him. His jaw tightened again. Gentry was not an American soldier himself, never had been, but he was an American. And although he had neither responsibility for nor relationship with the U.S. military, he'd seen years of images on television of carnage just like that which was happening before him, and it both sickened and angered him to the very limits of his considerable self-control. The men around the aircraft began to undulate as one, in the glare from the heat pouring out of the arid earth between his overwatch and the crash site, it took him a moment to grasp what was happening. But soon, he recognized the inevitable outpouring of gleeful emotion from the butchers around the downed helicopter. The bastards were dancing over the bodies. Gentry unwrapped his finger from the trigger guard of the huge Barrett and let his fingertips stroke the smooth trigger. His laser rangefinder told him the distance, and a small group of canvas tents between himself and the dance party flapped in the breeze and gave him an idea of the windage. But he knew better than to fire the Barrett. If he charged the weapon and pulled the trigger, he would kill a couple of shitheads, yes, but the area would turn so hot in an instant with news of a sniper in the sector that every post-pubescent male with a gun and a mobile phone would be on his ass before he made it to within five miles of his extraction. Gentry's exfiltration would be called off, 
and he would have to make his own way out of the kill zone. No, Gentry told himself. A meager measure of payback would be righteous, but it would set off a... <laughs>